I don't really know what to expect, but I do know that it's probably going to be odd. The first track is called Jin Wei Thek. that was beautiful so pretty and totally unexpected i just yeah i mean i guess since april 14th is on the album i should have known that there could be some other very pretty tonal things but a flat a flat dorian it's like minor but one of the notes is more mystical so i was really enjoying the sound of that scale which already sounds very enchanting to me with this instrument and I cannot place what that is I'm hearing some piano I think in the left hand at least that's how I think about it and then the right, maybe it's a prepared piano sample or something like that. Or maybe this is another one of those um, disclavi disclavier compositions where there's a prepared piano and it's being triggered by MIDI or something like that. But it's absolutely gorgeous. I am definitely adding this to a playlist. If Jinwei Thek hasn't been in a film, I would be surprised. The elves were in the room with me. The second one's called Vord Vordhausben. So different than Jin Wei Thek. This track is, as they say, sick. It's very ill. First of all, the beats were just awesome. Just so beautiful, organized chaos. You know, it reminded me of, you know, some elements of like very complex drum and bass. But it also had like a tonal element to it. This kind of... Um, ambient kind of gentle spacey sound which i feel like some of the other stuff of his i've heard has had that same juxtaposition not only nerding out but also getting like the brain like the brain itch or brain scratching of just those highly complex rhythms and how well they were mixed and how they you know were panned and it was just like really uh satisfying sonically and so I was like yeah and then there's like these pretty like spacey melodies in fact if I listen to this a little bit more that sorry about that on the left hand hang on there's like a little uh you know it's almost harp like the synth right so kind of plucking its way up this doesn't sound dated to me again i didn't grow up with this album so for other people it'll be very nostalgic but to me this is totally new like part of it is like relaxing me and the other part of it's like amping me up to the max this next track is called 
<laughs> Maybe if I say it like I'm an elf, it'll make more sense. Kladvbong Mishk. Don't go to Kladvbong Mishk without the sword of Jinwei Thak. Okay, well, we're three tracks in, but so far I am enamored and impressed. That was really cool. It reminds me a lot of this one album that my friend Nick showed me, uh, played for me called Dawn of Midi. Highly recommend. But there's a very minimalist kind of quality to that. Really interesting, again, sort of combination of, of timbres. I can tell it's all being triggered somehow. And again, I don't know if these are samples or if it's machines that are playing these instruments, I could totally see a bunch of robots playing acoustic instruments. <laughs> but there was what sounded like a double bass. So that's like the stand-up basses. And then there was a piano. And then there were all these metallic percussive noises that were somewhat pitched. So they're also kind of tonal. Maybe sounds almost like thumb harps, you know, or the imbira. The way that they're organized is not around a tonal center or anything like that. There's no scale. There's still, there's some organization though. It's just not that. But I'd be interested to see what a jazz musician's take on that piece of music is because I think that they would hear it a bit differently. I think their ears are trained to recognize patterns and dissonance that a lot of us just don't hear. So far we are three for three. I am really into this. Okay, fourth track is called Om Om Gaya Switch 7. <laughs> the second time he's ended something like that where there's a sort of discordant chord that kind of rings out really quietly dude i love this <laughs> I'm, so, I'm like i'm just gonna add all these tracks to my playlist and then i'm gonna be like oh it's the whole album i know that that may have seemed like chaos but it wasn't there was actually a beat most of the time it just took me a couple there's a couple moments like the beginning and the end which i think were kind of like bookends to the song where I lost any sort of sense of pulse or couldn't find one and then I and then I found it again which was a cool feeling I love that where you're like I am not ah there I am it's really a kind of a cool feeling of like a suspended in like a timeless place and then you like hit the ground not only was that did it have a groove that is very consistent just like a pulse like most music but it also had a very sensible tonality. The bass line 
was interacting with the melody like in a regular piece of music. It was supporting the melody like it was the bottom of chords and things like that. I could tell you that this isn't a key and it's got a scale and it's like, you know, but it's really cool the way he sort of, maybe sort of like Trent Reznor, but maybe to the extreme, kind of hiding all this like beauty, <laughs> whether or not it's intentional, but it, it's sort of obscured from us. There's so many other things flying in our faces, you know, that are pulling our attention because it's almost like we have to. It's like a, it's a, it's a matter of like survival. You know, our, our nervous system is getting like pummeled that you have to like <sighs> calm down and like access what's underneath all of that. I think for Trent Reznor, it's a little bit more of like noise, noisiness, distortion, and that kind of thing. Uh, and for Aphex Twin, I just, I don't have a, I can't make a claim yet about how he's doing it. But in this one, it was the drums. And it also in Claude Vermeermischk, uh, was, was similar uh, way of like, you know, very, very intense drums. And then this like beauty underneath. But I also noticed in this track and maybe another one, which I forgot to mention, that the synths sound detuned. So they just kind of, they have a organic sort of wavering to them. They kind of go in and out of tune, either oscillators with each other or they or, or different notes are just kind of going out of tune with each other. And it's cool. I mean, I've been thinking a lot about this, how, you know, Westerners ears are very trained to think that anything that goes outside of our just intonation, the 12 pitches here, is out of tune and sounds weird and is very, very unsettling. It's just cool to hear, you know, what music made by Westerners that is sort of exploring, right? These, uh, the lines between the notes basically and making us really have to confront the rigidity through which we hear things. So it was just a touch with this one, but this is really interesting. Uh, the whip, the whip was so crazy. And there's a sample that I heard at the end as well as at the beginning that sounded like maybe a sample of a voice that had been distorted and filtered. And, uh, but I started really enjoying that kind of loop when it would come around and wanting to sort of uh, almost like sing along to it or mimic the rhythm, similarly to how I would hear samples in Nine Inch Nails music, especially the downward spiral, you know, that like screams, right? That aren't musical, but they become musical with repetition. So there's a, this is a gold mine. The, the vibe I was getting was Phrygian dominant or Hijaz, that sound. Oh, yeah, and I, disclaimer that I should have made at the beginning, um, I'm in no way saying that Aphex, twin, Richard, sorry, <laughs> Aphex is his first name, I'm kidding, uh, that Richard is thinking about things like scales and chords, I, I doubt it, you know, I, I think a lot of us aren't actually, uh, this is just one way to name what, what I'm hearing, but yeah, he's just doing what sounds good, or sounds weird, or whatever he likes, whatever he's trying to do. <laughs> And that part sounds like C minor, but just things are just uh, wa wavering in and out of tune. It's so it's so beautiful. Next one's called Strotha, Strotha Tan, Tan. <laughs> Ooh. There's a flanger on that piano. 
wonder if that was an improv. That's the that's the impression it gave me. It's very meandering. Nothing's repeated twice. You know, just sort of this chord, this note a couple times, then this chord, this chord, you know, like just Again, it'd be so interesting to, to see what a, a jazz a jazz musician's take on that would be, or jazz pianist specifically. Like, what would they hear in that? To me, I can hear lots of dissonances and consonances. So, like moments where the chords sound very stable and what we're accustomed to hearing, like a major chord or something. You know, just like a... there was there was like two of those, and then the rest had lots of other notes in them, lots of tension, you know, um, you know, intervals that some people would feel very uncomfortable with. But again, a jazz musician would be like, oh yeah. <laughs> there were so many moments where I felt like I like barely got my footing and then he would like change it to something where again, it just felt like the ground beneath me was constantly shifting, which is kind of how it felt when I was just improvising just now. Like, you know, I'm not trying to create any kind of foundation for the listener to rely on. In fact, I don't want them to rely on anything. I don't want them to get attached to any chord I'm playing, right? This is, you could think of this as like either a run on sentence or even a, bunch of unfinished thoughts. So if somebody just started to, the plant that was, and if I don't, you know, like, <laughs> and just that for two minutes, but musically. All right, so the next track is called Gwetty Mernins. Good old Gwetty Mernins. Highly recommend that one with headphones and eyes closed. It reminded me of how I felt going to the dream house. I know I've mentioned this before, but it's such a such a memorable experience. Dream house in Manhattan by Lamont Young and Catherine Zizila, where they're playing all the prime number frequencies as a sine wave all at once. It makes you feel like there's no sense of time at all. And this obviously had a lot of things changing, so it did have a sense of time, but for some reason it was like very hypnotic. This panning felt very primal. Like, like it felt like it was like, like my nervous system was trying to sync up to it in some way, like a heartbeat. Did somebody mention a sonogram? Because I feel like that is such a good descriptor. And it also has like a sucking quality to it too, like a pound and a suck. So I don't know, both of those felt very heart-like. Our nervous system doesn't know any different. It doesn't know that it's music. It's going to regulate to it or somehow be affected by it. So just that alone was really cool. And then on top of it, it was, it was changing at times, you know, panning, but also sometimes the the sort of rhythm it was creating would kind of get a little out of phase with itself. So instead of it started going like that, and then it would kind of like even out. And then there was another moment where it sort of felt like it kind of like reverse direction or something. And I felt myself go like, whoa, you know, like I felt like I was like at, at the mercy of it. And then these really haunting 
synths, again, the fidelity of the synths he's using, the depth and the organic nature of them, the way they feel like there's just so much going on dynamically, sonically. It was like a living, breathing synth sound. And I, lo I love those. And I, that's part of why also this sounds more timeless to me. The, uh, yeah, and, and doesn't it didn't really feel like there was a, you know, a key or anything like that, but it sort of did imply a feeling of tonality that made a little bit more sense. And I was kind of, I was kind of hearing it that way. I was kind of like expecting the melody, you know, when it would come and it would repeat. And another cool thing about that song, I didn't realize until like halfway through is that there's like a low bass note. I don't think it's a sign. It could be, but it sound, sounded like it had more texture to it. So probably not a sign, but some kind of simple maybe wave way down low on one note, <clears throat> just being held out the entire time. And so it's not behaving like a bass line, but it is behaving like the persistent low end of a piece of music or, or organized sound. So it was just like very persistent and actually felt a bit tense to me because it didn't ever let up or change. It was just like this. The next track is called By Dinyon Chord. Every song different than the next. That was not my favorite that we've heard so far. That groove had, it has the 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 drum sound. I'm not sure. I think it might be like a hand drum that's used in reggae. So it definitely gave like a, a different vibe and it was very danceable, right? And it, it almost felt like if Aphex Twin did Muzak or elevator music, uh, there was no bass line whatsoever. So it was very like empty feeling and very floaty. And maybe that's part of why the the chords felt really disconnected from the drum beat. Like they felt like almost two different songs that just happened to be in the same tempo sort of overlaid. Okay, next is called Cock version 10. Again, that kind of same ending just like a soft you know there is something to say for making a soundscape like this that keeps you constantly like huh what you know like you can't just not with something like this you can't just zone out you can't just not pay attention it's totally overwhelming right and so to each their own like for some people this might be very stressful to listen to. I'm finding it, at least right now, very exciting and kind of uh, that same, it's like this brain scratching feeling I get. Just the the complexity of all these beats and it's mixed really well. Like to me, and again, I you know, I'm not a mixing engineer, so take this with a grain of salt, but to me, it sounds like 
it could have been mixed today. Very interesting to hear on headphones. And it's very crisp and pleasing and just tasty, tasty. And then he's got these, again, these like kind of beautiful sort of ethereal uh, synth, you know, kind of chords and melodies that make so much more sense. It's such a strange marriage. I really like it. This one had like a 303 bass that wasn't acting like a bass though. It was just, you know, being another rhythmic textural element in the low end. And then the synth lead reminds me of some of the other synth leads on some of the other tracks we just heard. So like maybe this is one of his favorite kind of sounds. And I can't describe it. I just know what it sounds like. The next one is April 14th, which, you know, you know, I did a video about. It's a really, really pretty piano piece. It feels very, um, I don't know, gentle. I could see someone dancing like a, a ballet to this. You know, it's very sweet. Uh, some folks were comparing it to Eric Satie, the French impressionist composer. But let's look at kind of what the chords are doing and the melodies and why it's so lovely. Have. Next track is eight minutes long. It's called Mount St. Michel plus St. Michael's Mount. That last part, <laughs> I can't even talk. That was like when you're when you're in the car and someone rolls their window down just enough so that the pressure in the car is like beating, you know, and it's like you can feel it going in your ears and you're like, oh, it was like that, but way more intense and sharp and oh my gosh. I'm not saying I didn't like it. I just, that was just a lot. Anybody else? <laughs> oh, yes, it's a gate. Yeah, it's just cutting the signal so fast. That was crazy. Oh, I have so many thoughts if they, had, if my mind's not erased. After the first part, which was very abrasive, then we got, we got our relief. Our Aphex Twin synths came in, right? Once again, playing very beautiful melodic lines with harmony and chords and everything in its right place. Not the song, the concept. And... No bass line to back them up. I feel like that's ver that's starting to become, I think, a trend, at least in this album. Kind of these almost like disjointed parts. And you have to work to make them connect. It's not all just laid out for you. This song is written in the key of A quarter flat or whatever. I don't know. It's in between... Um, two notes it's not a flat that's the closest tone but this oh. 
that's like a really great melody in a minor key. Sorry, A flat, flat, flat. It's a, it's a statement that resolves itself at the end. It's really pretty. I love that part. That's my favorite part. That sounds so cool. And then there were chords too at the beginning. We're not going to go into it, but there were like actual really beautiful chords. That one I really liked. I felt, honestly, I felt like that eight minute length was perfect for the amount of changes that he goes through in his songs. Oh, I, one more comment and then we'll move on. The, the synth lead... I'm noticing, again, I don't have the vocabulary just yet to describe it. So it'd be interesting to hear from anybody that's watching that is really familiar with synths. But it sounds like a lot of the sounds he's using and gravitating towards, either they're pads with very little, very slow attack. And then he has another sound he seems to really like where it has a strong attack, a quick decay and a long release so it it kind of goes bing and you end up with these like layers of his like bing 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 and you can hear sort of like a chord being created by the line that is left of all of those attacks and they kind of get drawn out i wish i could draw this right now but it's like bing bing <laughs> Almost like an EKG or something. And it reminded me of a song that's in my head. <laughs> Listening to this is reminding me of so much music in my library. Like more than usual. I do listen to a lot of electronic music. So probably there's a lot of the artists I'm listening to have been influenced by this album and by Aphex Twin, so that makes sense. The vocals were beautiful. We have this sort of haunting, very innocent sounding, like young woman singing. It was very, it sounded very present and close by and kind of intimate, uh, kind of raw, vulnerable. And she was, she was singing along with that melody. So that was really nice. That had a very cool vibe to it. The next track is called Guarek 2. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> that affected me. That is a crazy experience with headphones. I guess all I can say is that had every fiber of my being on edge and in suspense, there was a moment where it made me, uh, like I wasn't sad or moved or anything, but I started to tear up. And then at the same time, my salivary glands started doing that thing where, you know, when a lot of saliva comes out, it like kind of hurts. It's like this look, you know, like, mm. and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> what is going on? It reminded me a little bit of like creatures a lot of the time, you know, it's like sometimes I'm like, okay, yeah, it's a sound. I can hear him manipulating and experimenting with the sound. 
Other times, though, I kind of forgot what I was really listening to and just was sort of imagining being in a very dangerous, dark place with, like, creatures from another dimension that I can't see and can only hear. And that is cool. Next one's called Orban EQ Tricks. Tricks. I was just begging to be sampled. What a cool loop. That's, I mean, that's how it feels, just like a drum loop, you know. Um, great groove. Love how distorted the kick is. Love how metallic and tonal the snare is. I can kind of get like, you know, Nine Inch Nails Ghosts vibes from that. It's, there's something almost a little industrial about it, but also it was kind of very groovy, kind of hip hoppy, trip hoppy. It was drums and it was bass, basically. And I love the uh, the delay they put on it. It felt very dub, that don go go go. It was really nice. I just have to say, again, not really knowing anything about Mr. Richard D. James, if he mixed this, he is an incredible engineer on top of all the other skills he has that he probably gets uh, a lot of attention for. But I am having such an experience with the way that this stuff is mixed. It is phenomenal. I wish my music could sound like that sonically, you know, like that that level of fidelity, that just the 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 magic or the science behind enge engineering music is is uh well, I value it, I guess is all I'm trying to say. I don't know if it gets overlooked, but I kind of feel like it does and it makes a huge difference. So yeah. All right. The next track is called Osso 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 and it has fewer than a thousand listens because it's only thir thirteen seconds long. So let's hear it. Okay. So that sounds like an audio sample of two women speaking in Mandarin in a bathroom. That's what that sounds like to me. One more time. <laughs> I'm really curious about all the silence at the end of these tracks because like that sample ended at eight seconds and then it goes on for five more seconds uh, total silence. And a lot of these have at least like three to, f to eight seconds of actual silence at the end of the tracks. And I'm sure that was on purpose for some reason. The next track is called Hi uh, Skullyas Lif Adagro. Adagro. So that one was very similar to Jin Weivek, the first track. Same sound, same maybe, or same maybe prepared piano, disc clavier or whatever. <laughs> we had a very kind of pure sounding piano as well as very strained, you know, almost harpsichord like. It makes everything sound very mystical, but also the songs in the minor key, it's an A minor. I really like, I love stuff in minor keys. So I already was like this sound plus these things. It, does, it doesn't sound like a real human's playing it. It has a very, you know, very consistent everything. Just dun, 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 dun. Very exact. The melody though had some nice syncopation in it, which kind of gave it a little bit more humanity, a little bit more interest. Some of those, there's some little moments in there where I was like, oh, I want to hear that developed more. Like, I want to hear that repeated more, or whatever. But he did actually come back to several of his themes and repeat them, which I thought was really good. Similarly to how he did that in uh, April 14th. And that made it a little bit more like a, more like a song, you know? It's kind of got sections and there's things that kind of come back um, that you get familiar with, that you start to expect that you can sing along to or, or, or you know, that stick with you. I kind of want to, 
like search the internet now for covers of this song. I, I want to hear. I want to hear what this material can be kind of turned into because I feel like it's almost like it's like an idea that could be further fleshed out. And I want to hear that happen. But if it hasn't been done, then maybe I will. Hassan Dalek. That is a nice composition. Again, I wish it were fleshed out. I am sure there are people that have done covers of this that I've heard I've heard this before somehow, but I don't I can't place it. I, I, I feel like I'm having like a weird like like I'm dissociating or something. <laughs> this album has done a lot of things to me tonight. It's a good thing I'm splitting this live stream up because I need some time to like recover <laughs> from this. I've heard that before. How have I heard that before? And I thought it got bigger. I thought it like developed into something. I don't know, but um, B minor. Hey, B minor kids. The melody was absolutely beautiful. There was, I don't have a, a name for this technique, but it's something I do also and really enjoy listening to. It's like you take a melody and like the highest note in the melody, when you repeat the statement, you change the highest note to something even higher usually. And then you change it again. So listen, listen. Okay. So this part. Da, 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 and da. When that happened, I was like, yes, <laughs> so emotional to do that. You set up this thing where you're like, da, da, da. you do it again. You think it's going to happen again, but this time it's. And that particular interval is so pretty. It's got kind of leaving hope uh, interval jumps, big, big, big jumps like that. Even just the rhythm. Da, 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 da. Doesn't it sound like uh, maybe Eastern European or something? I'm not sure what country I'm thinking of, but some kind of folk music. It's got a little bit of flair and sass. And those like kind of triplets. Which is cool and refreshing to hear, I think. Because the left hand is so consistent, da, 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 da. And, the, and, then the, and then the right hand so playful, and there's that one note that makes it all. Da, da. That one. There's our tritone. This has some like more traditional, but again, like maybe Eastern European traditional, like chord changes and stuff. You got this, it's called the five chord. Anyway, it is a little bit more um, recognizable, I guess. There was like more familiarity with this, this piece of music than the other ones in a lot of ways, but that could totally be in a film and it probably has been. Flamenco, yeah, maybe, 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 yeah, maybe something kind of, um, yeah, Spanish. And the the breadth of his work here is, I mean, sure, he's got some stylistic consistencies, but just the fact that you've got these like little piano vignettes and then, you know, and then like chaotic drum and bass glitch with like dreamy minimalist synths and, you know, and then that sound design piece, the Orban, I think, no, it was Guaric too. Uh, you know, just, and there's a whole other disc. And then there's a whole discography. Cool. Well, I think I've been converted, is what I'm trying to say. Ha, I. 
I'm start I'm starting Halloween tonight. And if you're wondering what I am, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm watching you. Okay. 54 Kimru beats. want to listen to venetian snares have y'all listened to venetian snares it's like a odd odd time signature drum and bass at least the album that, that i was listening to most recently yeah it reminds me of drum and bass and break beats but without the bass just the beats there's some bass stuff but it's like it's almost like the bass in this music isn't providing like the low end you know, like it often is in drum and bass. It's just like another kind of textural percussive element. This song is the closest song of his that, that at least we've heard on this album that I would say is atonal. There's there's no harmony, there's no melody, right? It's It's very much all about textures, rhythms, dynamics. I I went through a period where I listened to a lot of glitch hop and I have a huge appreciation for the complexity of like glitch in general. And it's really cool to hear kind of like glitch and drum and bass and breaks kind of all uh, this, this confluence of all those elements is interesting. And then you add on top some of the stuff that he's been doing in the other tracks where he's, you know, adding like these kind of dreamy melodies. And you definitely have, I think, a, a fairly unique sound. There was another moment where he was using the gate in a very highly rhythmic way and it was just super fast and the way it's mixed it was just so sharp it was just like i don't know i guess regardless of whether or not i like a piece of music if it makes my whole body react in some way i feel like it has value and i might want to listen to it again i actually really liked this but there are like moments where i just like i don't know if it's like my nervous system or something gets like really overwhelmed and then i get this like I got like a rush during one of those moments. And there are times from the other night where I was just like kind of losing my mind. Oh, well, I so I found out I mispronounced that song. You're saying it's pronounced Camry? So I'm probably going to botch the rest of them too. Next track is Batom, Batom Romada with a hyphen. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have something that is very tonal. It's just major and minor chords. It sounds like church bells. There's no drums. It's a metric, right? It's just kind of got this cadence to it, but it doesn't have like a clear pulse of any kind. Didn't really feel like anything repeated there. That's definitely a thing. Like I've, I've heard some of the tracks on here where there's some repetition, but a lot of time it's kind of just it's like he's not sticking to a particular theme he's kind of evolving from wherever he is yeah but it but it didn't sound exactly like church bells obviously this is some kind of i mean i guess it would be a synth that's my first thought but again i haven't read about how the how this whole album was made and what he's using and i'm i'm guessing it's going to be pretty fascinating to find out but it's something that doesn't sound like a real instrument. So if it was once a real instrument, it's been, you know, modified. Very evocative. It was like having pictures in my head of like, you know, a foggy, foggy morning, really quiet, peaceful place and like church bells or something and like no one around. It's kind of a lonely, sweet moment. 
So since these are all real words, which I didn't realize, I thought it was I thought it was a made up language. I don't. I just assumed. I didn't look it up. Wondering if it would be most honorable for me to learn how to pronounce these words before I say them. I have someone on the stream who might be able to help. Oh, listen to this. Okay, I just put Lorna Derrick into the the Google. Found a Reddit post. It says, Lorna Derrick on drugs stands for Lorna and Derrick, Rich's parents, which can be heard on his voicemail. Also, this person spelled drugs with the Q capitalized. Does that mean I'm supposed to say drug Qs? So, this is Lorna Derrick. 30 seconds long. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rachel. Aww. Happy birthday to you. Oh, did you hear that harmony? <laughs> Happy birthday, my little son. My little twenty-eight year old son. Well, you were born by now because you were born about five o'clock in the morning. Uh well you'll you have a lovely day. I hope your card came. Aw, that's so sweet. Aw, that's so, so sweet. But yeah, I'm wondering now. So his uh, so his mom and dad, they're singing in tune. <laughs> Let me analyze Lorna Derrick. They're singing in tune and mom was doing a very pretty harmony that I would say reminds me of like choral music. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Uh oh, I just touched my mouth. Okay, the next one is QK Thur. Gosh, I wish I had heard this album when I when it came out. I really think this would have influenced me. I feel like there were directions I was kind of heading on my own that were maybe not towards the drum and bass side. Actually, definitely not towards the drum and bass side of things. But a lot of his music is sounding to me like marrying acoustic instruments that you might find in both like orchestral music and folk music with technology that sounded almost like a clarinet but it was being played by something that has an has action you know it almost sounded like keys or something so is it a mellotron i can't wait i can't wait to look it up oh, but i will wait i'm being patient that was also very uh, pretty but very dreamy it wasn't like Here's a chord, here's a chord, here's a chord. And then it loops like a chord progression. It was very like, here's a chord. And then here's like a nearby chord. Let me kind of pulse on that and then kind of move down. And it felt almost like it was more being created by like spacing than it was trying to create some kind of catchy hook thing, right? Which I'm sure is not really his thing anyway. But if you transcribed that it would you probably i'm guessing would see that he's probably just kind of moving down i mean it reminds me of a keyboard but i don't know that's how i was thinking about it but also look at clarinet so I, I'm, I'm not sure what was going on there but how what a cool this is cool though right it's it's wonderful to listen to music where everything makes sense and you don't have to think about it and it just feels good or it makes you want to dance like pop music I, pop music does more than that. I'm just giving an example. But it is really cool listening to music like this where even something that feels fairly innocuous, I would say, is making me think so hard because I'm like, what is that? What is making that sound? I think it's normal for our brains to try to match up what we're hearing with something we've heard before. And if it starts to sound like an acoustic instrument, we're like, is it that? But it does, doesn't quite sound like that. So what could it be? And um, yeah, so... Not surprisingly, all of this music is really keeping me very engaged. 
It's, it's engaging my listening in many different ways. Accordion. Okay. Yes, maybe, maybe. I wish Mark was on the live stream. He plays accordion. He'd be able to tell us. Okay, now that you said that. You're right. It, well, I do think it's an air. It's an instrument where air is involved. <laughs> well, air is involved in everything with sound. But you know what I mean? Like a, a column of air. Some, some, yeah. Good, good guess. The next one's called Melt Face 6 with a PH. Makes me want to listen to Melt Face 1 through 5. Another super cool track. That last part, I was trying to figure out on the piano because it was so harmonious. And I was just like, this is so strange. Um. It's like a very pretty minor figure. So lovely. Love the, I just love the glitch. I think he's doing such a good job with that. He's definitely keeping me very interested the entire time. This one had some very floaty melodies again and chords, and they sounded... Um, lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, at the beginning, they were kind of out of tune and kind of going in and out of tune. So I can see why t Res cites him as an influence because I think you know there's there's it's clearly a type of musician who finds a particular beauty in things sounding broken and out of tune and until you're exposed to that you know I think it's understandable that that might be a little unsettling you know and not not beautiful <laughs> but really just weird and confusing so I feel like I'm primed I mean I don't know if I'd listened to this 20 years ago if I would have liked it. I think there are parts of it I would have liked, but I don't know if I would have actually taken the time to sit down and listen to the entire thing. There may have been moments where it was would have just been too weird for me, but it's hard to say. Chris says it felt more like a great jazz track. Interesting. Why do you say that? How would how would Aphex Twin spell jazz? C H Z J Y Z Z S C. The next track is bit four. And it's only 25 seconds long, so it's going to be a little interlude, I think. There's a lot of reverb on that. Prep Guarek 36. Ah, prep probably refers to the prepared piano. That just reminds me a lot of like the minimalism, the minimalist music that I was listening to in college. It's sounded like a prepared piano and it was very exact though. Like it sounds like a machine was playing the piano and it was a uh, percussive, not tonal, just really cool sounds. And it's so unusual, right? It's just not something you hear every day. 
Really cool rhythms, lots of syncopation. Right. I think it would be really interesting to hear that sampled as like a drum groove, like the basis of a drum groove for a, another piece of music. I mean, I feel like I feel like a lot of us really like hearing unusual sounds in the music we listen to. You know, I, sometimes I worry with how much I'm chasing novelty because I can get bored with things. It is really exciting to hear new sounds. Father. Well, that was atonal, very modern sounding. I was trying to search for patterns and I couldn't find any, but of course I only listened to it once. So if I listened to it again and again, which I would do if I were alone, I would try to figure out if there was some pattern there. Cause it sounds like, it sounds like a computer did that. Like, like he gave some parameters to some technology and then it's playing the piano cause everything was extremely exact. All the dynamics were very consistent. All of those chords were huge and they were, all the notes were being played at the same time. It just didn't sound like a human was playing it. It sounded random, but there's a chance that it was actually organized, but it's, but it's perceived as randomness or it could have been random. I mean, we could just, you know. I guess I should have released that track. <laughs> should just do a whole album doing that and then people would be like you're a genius <laughs> this next track is called taking control what a normal name makes me suspicious <laughs> I like that long clap <laughs> I'll be honest, that one wasn't really for me. I, I don't, I didn't really enjoy that. Uh, I think it's because it just didn't feel very musical to me. How many one shots can I jam into seven minutes, 14 seconds? And maybe that's what he did, I, you know? In which case it's a success. I can't say it's bad. I just don't think I will ever be listening to that one again. Petit al, petit al CX. Oh God. Hit. 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 I'm going to hate editing this video and watching myself try to pronounce all of these. That's so French. French Impressionist. Seti Debussy. This makes me want to meet all the Aphex Twin 
Aphex twins. <laughs> I was going to say Aphex Twin fans, but it came out as Aphex Twans. <laughs> Just because I feel like, like Nine Inch Nails, you know, the fans have so many different parts of them to be enjoying this music. You know, to, to love this kind of gentle, like I said, sort of French impressionistic piano solo. It's very sweet, almost like a, a lullaby. And then to be like, you know, to this frenetic drum and bass, and then this crazy kind of sound design track was a guar, guar. No, that's a different one. I really enjoyed it. I would love to see a really talented uh, pianist like Nare Soul do an interpretation of that, like kind of add some movement to the left hand and like she could, she's incredibly skilled and just to. I just would love to see what she would do with those harmonies and, and it's so pretty. It was really nice. I was, it had that, that French sound because I think it was a pretty, pretty part in The Girl with the Flaxen Hair by WC. That sound. Seventh chords. Definitely got a little bit of a, like La Mer flavors as well. Next is Ruglin Holon, or Holon, or Ruglin, Ruglin Holon. That was uh, something where things repeated, right? So there was some predictability. The fact that I could play along to that, you know, means that there was some predictability. It sounded like another prepared piano to me, which is a cool. I've I have always wanted to do that. I haven't had the option. I don't know how you would get your hands on a piano that you could mess with i'm sure there are non-destructive ways to prepare a piano but of course i wouldn't want to do that to someone else's piano goals for someday when i hear a prepared piano sometimes it makes it sound more wooden kind of the way that like sometimes wooden tonal instruments can have a little bit of a hollow kind of and and tonal ambiguity to them or it'll sound more like a harpsichord. Not ex not exactly like it. Much more metallic, kind of biting, sharp. I don't know. I have all these visuals in my head, but it, it goes there. And then with a prepared piano, sometimes depending on how you hard, how how hit you hard, <laughs> the the key. Um, sometimes it will sound more like a regular piano, and sometimes it'll sound really dead. You know, so there's all this like organic variability was the same every single time and that duh, that duh, was so staccato and so bright and so so loud and really short and it sounded really good i just enjoyed that timbre details details really pretty and i would say that that was in d minor next is afx 237 version 7 afx afx coincidence
those endings of his this like drawn out weird note or two it's 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 interesting listening to Aphex Twin this way. I mean, listening to the track all the way through, and then talking about it because it goes through so many phases, even in just a couple minutes. That it's like, I by the time it's over, I'm like, I kind of forgot what happened to me. But I do like this last part was really interesting. These because it sounded like like a signal, and then it gets, or you know, a note, whatever. It gets repeated octaves higher really quickly. And the way that he mixed it, I got this like really strong vis visual. Maybe it's like almost like a video game visual or something of like really steep steps. Like in every step is when it goes up an octave. So it's like, you know, and it they're like going up on either side, like in these like waves. And it's like creating like a, like a cityscape or something. Yeah, it's very cool. Next one is Zygomatic 17. It makes me think of maybe like 1950s science fiction movies or something. Like like they would name a device the Zygomatic 17. <laughs> Definitely Thank not. you for your attention. Bye. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, I was definitely not expecting a robot to talk to me at the end, but um, for that, I was going to say, I was not expecting a song like that to end the way it did with this very pretty stuff. I'm trying to figure out kind of the sound of his tonality. I feel like a lot of the time it's actually quite simple. I don't mean simplistic. I mean simple like pentatonic scales and kind of i don't know there's a lot of like there's not a lot of tritones kind of a neat sound sort of a innocent childlike tonality against that there's some sounds that he was using in this track and in taking control that remind me of some of the one shots that i got my hands on in 2001 so same year and they're stuff that I was hearing in like rave music and and some trance to a certain kind of clap and a certain kind of hi-hat. I like the hi-hat, but I have I have grown to not really like the sound of that clap. So it's funny, I imagine I'm not the only person like this where there's particular sounds that when I hear them, it doesn't matter if the rhythms are cool, if the melody is cool, if the chords are cool, if it's being expressed through that sound, I just like don't like it. It's kind of crappy. It's almost like, you know, it's like cilantro. I wish I liked cilantro, but I, I don't. It tastes like chemicals and soap and it ruins everything that it's in. Same thing with that clap. I'm just like, ah, like, ugh. So I was wondering, if you guys recognize that sound and if you know where it came from, because I'm guessing it came from a sampler. Uh, Chris saying, isn't that the TR-909 clap? The cilantro clap? <laughs> yes. Clap-lantro. 
Next track is Besku Besku Three Ep. Why am I even bothering to try to pronounce these? I'll just flash them on the screen, and then I'll have a super cut at the end of me trying to pronounce all the names. <laughs> Little reward for those that watch till the end. Back to Bex Besku um, Three Pin. No, no, no. no. A prepared piano can kind of remind me of like gamelan music. That ending reminded me of like the way I might end a song when I was a kid. Not saying that what he did is immature. It's just the way I used to end. You know, I might like just go like, and then like, <laughs> it just kind of like. <laughs> I wouldn't say it was atonal. I actually, I mean, I don't know. I could definitely detect patterns, a lot of a lot of dissonance, and I wouldn't say it has like a key a lot of the time. But there are moments where I was like, I am connecting the dots in that way because that's what my ear is searching for. And there's some interesting things. That's what our brains are doing with music usually is finding patterns. I shouldn't, shouldn't generalize that, but I think a lot of the time that's kind of what's happening is finding patterns. So it's cool to try to find patterns in something like that. Really cool rhythms in the first part. The middle part got really like kind of tame. I lost interest for a moment, but then I thought, okay, maybe it's just the contrast between all the rhythmic complexity I was just hearing and now it's very simple. So what if I just pretended the song started like this and then I was like oh yeah now I like it I basically feel like this music is doing experiments on my brain I'd be really curious to see after we do this listening party how many of these songs have been covered on piano you know and how coverable are they our last track of this two disc album is Nano 2 oh French impressionist This sounds like the end. Like two people saying goodbye or the end of someone's life or something.
That one has such a powerful mood to it. It's incredibly spacious. You get this lush chord and then all this space to just like let it envelop you. You're like swimming in it. Every single time you have that time with the chord. And it really makes you like think and pay attention, at least me, to how I'm feeling. You know, it's like in the silence. I know it's not silence, but in that resonance, you're kind of left with yourself. So I like the space in that. A lot of those chords reminded me of, you know, big jazz chords. And I'm pretty sure every single one of them had a tension in it. So, but I, what I mean by that is it had either like a seventh, a ninth, an eleventh, a sixteenth, thirteenth. I'm sorry. I was thinking sixth, thirteenth. I really enjoyed the kind of like higher, like, you know, like chord. It was like a chord. I don't know what again they were. I'm just making it up. But, and then it go like, you know, and then the next one. I don't know. This little uh, kind of echoes sort of of the chord. Nice little offset. Really pretty. There was a moment where, uh, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes you're listening to like a, a, a line. So like the contour, even of the top note of a chord or a melody itself. And you're sort of, your brain might be sort of almost imagining where it's going to go next. And mine was doing that at this one part. And then he went to the place I was imagining. That's a really, that's a really a fulfilling experience, I think. It's also really fulfilling, though, when you're like, I think it's going to go here, and then it doesn't. But where it goes is even cooler or just as cool, but different. That's also really exciting. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of this album. Until next time, I love you. Jin Weithek, Besku 3, Vordas, Vordasben. Om, Om Gaia, Switch 7. Ruglin Holon, or Holon. Bai Dinyon Chord, or Ruglin, Ruglin Holon. Strotha, Strotha Tain, Tain. Petial, Petial Hai A Skullyas, Lif Adagro, Adagro. QK Thur. Batom, Batom, Romada, with a hyphen.